I'd like to ask Mr. Nobu Nakitani, Executive Director of the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation, to vote, make a few remarks. Then Mr. Charles Erting, the head of the European Cybercrime Centre in Europol. Mr. Nakitani. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nobol Nakatani, Executive Director of, of, of the uh, Interpol Global Complex Innovation, which had the soft opening uh, yesterday. So I, I, I would say that our organization entity is quite young. I would like to start my the statements by mentioning why Interpol and the Europol decided to have the joint cyber conference uh, this year, we are going to have it in Singapore. In fact, last year, more or less the same timing, we had the first edition of the Europol Interpol Cyber Conference in the, at the Europol headquarters, which is located in Hague, Netherlands. So um, the reason behind it is that cybercrime is a truly transnational crime in nature. Um, the criminal usage of the technology, especially internet, supports the big challenge to the law enforcement, the adding complexity and delays of that investigation across the jurisdiction. It's a huge challenge to law enforcement. And then no nations and no international organization or regional organization can handle, can deal with this issue alone. So Interpol, we believe that we need a global alliance to fight cybercrime, and then Europol is natural partner for Interpol to, to team up. So we spoke with each other. Law enforcement across the globe, even the wealthy country, have limited resources to deal with cybercrime. In order for us, two major police organizations to avoid unnecessary duplication of work. Instead, to generate synergy, let's work together. So we, Tos and myself, spoke in that way uh, just before the Europol uh, opened its cybercrime delegate center, that is EC3. Then we decided to have uh, the first Europol Interpol cyber conference last year. So this year in Singapore, celebrating soft opening of the IGCI. So what would be next? Next year, third edition, we'll, back, we'll be back to Netherlands. The year after, fourth edition, we'll be coming back to Singapore. So we would like to make this conference signature cybercrime conference for law enforcement. But I think that our vision is much larger than that. We would like to make this conference the signature conference actually not only for law enforcement in the future down the road, but also for the, uh, the I would say, private companies people and the academia. Because cyber crimes require us to work with non-police entities. So we need international multidisciplinary alliance to fight cyber crime. The police had suffered from no under-reporting so police does not have, law enforcement does not have complete picture, complete understanding of the threat we face. So in order for us to effectively, efficiently to deal with this threat, we need to work together. Then Interpol is not the entity to open, open the case, individual case, no. Our responsibility is to support our member country who are actually investigating. So in that sense, the Interpol, Europol are now tying up and then show the collective division and the way forward to better unite law enforcement entity or law enforcement community uh, in this uh, fight against cybercrime. And the Europol has done a great job because the Europol Cybercrime Center already have actually opened. Uh, it started in January 2013. So I think that uh, you can hear more about operational issues from my colleague Tobes. Thank you very much, Nabu, and thank you very much for these kind words. And uh, also thank you for coming to this press uh, event. Um, 
the internet will change the way that we work. It already has changed the way that you work, I guess. It will most certainly also change the way that I work. It's, it's one of the best innovations that uh, I have seen personally. I think that that drives growth and prosperity, it drives you know, idea sharing, it drives a lot of good things. But unfortunately, it also drives crime. And crime will change. Because normally in the physical world, the police has an area that we protect. It could be Singapore. You know exactly how big Singapore is, and everybody who commits crime in Singapore, you can catch. If it's a burglar, if it's a murderer, if it's a rapist, if it's a drug dealer. We can do this in all the countries. Because the criminals will have to go into our country to conduct the crime. But in cybercrime, this will change. Nobody needs to travel. Nobody needs to visit the country where they want to steal ideas, information, or money. So Singapore, South Africa, or Denmark will be a victim without ever seeing a criminal. And the criminal can also multiply his crime by doing it even when he sleeps. He can attack one million computers in 20 countries. In a physical world, you can only rape one person at a time. You can only make one burglary at a time because you need to be there. But the criminals can be in his bed downloading the software he needs, crime as a service, and conduct crime in many countries. That is why we need a global cooperation. And I think that this conference here, and I'm very, very uh, happy that uh, Lubu hosts this here in his new center, is a strong signal to the good guys, to our police mm -hmm. colleagues, to the, to the businesses, to the citizens of every country that we stand united in fighting this. And it's a very strong signal also to the criminals that they might run but they can hide. We will use and utilize all what we have together to identify them and to hunt them down. But what is it that we are against? And, and here uh, we have been in the position, I think that we will, in next year we will do this in a broader yeah. scale. We have here produced an executive summary for you which describes cybercrime towards the European Union. And this is, of course, only a region in the world. 500 million people in 28 states in Western Europe. But I can guarantee that this is the same type of crime that you will see in North America and South America and Asia. There is no difference. They do the same crime, they do it with the same tools. And that brings me to one of the threats that we see right now. And that is that because of crime as a service, has now produced, so many malware producers can upload, everybody can be a cyber criminal. Even though you're maybe not an expert in cyber, I can guarantee that you can hack his Facebook account or your Twitter account or anything else you want. You just download the tools and you utilize it. And that again makes it very, very difficult for us to catch up. Secondly, you will also see a different criminal model in the physical crime. If you want to buy drugs, if you want to buy stolen goods, if you want to buy identities, you normally have to do this physically. You go down and you buy it. Now, you go on the internet and you order it and the mailman will deliver it, even if you want cocaine, if you want weapons, if you want stolen identities, or you want stolen goods. Everything will change. And the ability for the police to identify is very, very limited due to the hidden services and the, the way that the internet works, and you have areas where the police can simply not make an attribution. So you can do things, I cannot identify you. This makes it very, very difficult. And that's also why we have to work together. And I think that by working together and by pooling mm. all what we know, we can actually achieve results we couldn't do if we were separately. So we will do this unitedly, yeah. because there is so much crime in cyberspace, and there is enough for Nubu, there is enough for me. We just need to do it in a way that we use our tools to support each other, and we will do this. And I think this is a good signal for everybody that, that you can count on that. And with this, I would uh, hand over the floor back again to, to you, Rachel, and, uh, and wait for any questions. Andrea Cohen, I'm sorry, Andrea from Bloomberg News, and this question is directed to either gentleman. Um, what would you say are the most common cyber crimes? Is it money laundering? Is it e-commerce fraud? 
and uh, what is your combat plan? Thank you. Uh, to reply to your questions, I think it depends on the regions. Uh, in, in, in general, I would say that the online fraud is the biggest threat, but I think that, that in terms of the criminality, um, viruses, computer viruses, still I think that the number one in terms of crime. But it depends on the regions, um, and then depends on the how you perceive cybercrime. So maybe I think you have your own yep. view on that. I think that you have two, two types of cybercrime, basically. The one type is this that can only be done on a computer. And this is intrusion, this is hacking and cracking, this is penetrating your social media, this is trying to steal your identity for, for, for using it, and it's also you know, to interfere with your, uh, with your account, your, your net banking account. Then there is cyber facilitated crime. And this is actually offline crime, but done with help from the online services. Child sexual exploitation is a good example. This is about rape of children in the physical world, but you use the internet maybe to stream live streaming of sexual assault that you pay for. So I could be a Western Union, a guy in, 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 in Germany. On the internet, I order two guys in, a, in an Asian country to rape a child, and I pay for it. So you use it. And this is cyber facilitated crime. Mm. The biggest problem for, for, I would say, average normal citizens would be that the risk of you getting your identity stolen, your credit card stolen, because you still have your credit card in your pocket, so you think that it's safe, but all of the numbers are stolen because they have penetrated your inbox or, or, or whatever, and they will then buy flight tickets in your name so, 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 so this is that they will also penetrate your internet account and your social media. I think this is where you will feel it. The good thing is that normally the credit card companies and the banks will cover this unless that you have been a, a big fool. But this will not go forever. So I think this is the first one. Then you will see much more intrusion uh, that you will see when we go online in the internet of everything. Everything will be connected. You are online with this one. You will have sensors all over in the future, your fridge will be with the, connected with the internet. So when you take the last beer, it will order automatically more beers and it will be delivered, everything will be automated. But in doing so, you also create more attack vectors. So there's more possibilities for criminals to get into the systems and that will create bigger problems. And then lastly, I'm a bit concerned that, that we give young people a smartphone but you don't give them any education. So everybody just goes on the smartphone, they download applications, and they become victims very, very easy because they, they don't know what to do and what not to do, and I think that we should change that. Yeah. Uh, just an additional in the comment. The, in fact, the motivation of the criminals, so the organized crime people especially, have remained the same. They like to make money. More profit, more profit. Maybe I think that the more, pro more profit in the low risk. And then cybercrime has scalability. What does this mean? If you want to get money on the street, you have to go to the bank with guns. You have to thread the bank clerk. Every minute you stay in the bank, the more risk you are apprehended. But in cybercrime, you just deploy the, the phishing mail, tricking the, uh, the bank account holders, and if it doesn't work for the, the, let's say, DBS. Let's try the HSBC, Standard Chartered. You can use the same platform to defend the actually banks. If the English-speaking bank doesn't work, okay, let's, let's do the same for Chinese, or French-speaking, or French language, the bank. So I think that there is a huge scalability which differentiates cybercrime from the traditional crime. Essentially, the actually unnecessity of the physical presence in the location where crime to, uh, takes place. Just an just additional comment. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Kimberly. I'm from Channel News Asia. Um, just two questions which are somewhat related and for either gentleman as well. Um, in your report, you mentioned that um, attacks predominantly originate from jurisdictions outside of the EU. Um, I just wanted to ask for some examples of countries in which these cyber attacks originate. And the second part of my question, um, I know that 
people that are not taking questions specific to Singapore, but for Interpol, um, I wanted to know how big a concern is Singapore for Interpol in terms of whether as a country susceptible to cyber attacks or as a country where attacks originate from. Thank you. If I take the first one, uh, the crime, we have stated in the uh, in the eye answer. If, if you look at cyber crime, you have a small group of people who are very very good in producing malware. So you have basically people who produces all kinds of tools that they then finalize. Then they send it to another group. The other group tests this malware if it can penetrate the antiviruses. Then they get tweaked gets back and, and then it's it's finalized. Now you have a hacking tool or you have a Trojan or you have a, a, a botnet, then you, you you put it on the net and other ones download it and use it. So it's not the same one who produces the malware but other ones use it. Now those who produce it, at least in Europe, is Russian speaking organized criminal predominantly. Eighty five percent of our cases originate from Russian speaking countries. This is not the Russian Federation, but Russian speaking. This is the group. This is a fact that we have right now. But this will, this changes all the time. But right now, this is the picture. This could change. But they produce the malware. Those who use it could be from Africa, from Asia, from South America, from Europe, trying to steal it by using these weapons of attack. So, so, so there. But, but we are of course trying to identify and hunt down the producers. Because if we can eliminate them, we eliminate the whole production of every tool. So, so, so that is our target right now to, to do this. But nobody is safe. And, 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 and they are not just going for, for EU states. They also do this against uh, the rest of the world. And you know, EC3 is only a regional component for, 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 for Europe. But, but, but we cannot do this even in Europe alone. That's why we need to reach out to... To, to other countries, because in the future I will guess that when Africa comes online, mm. and it's booming Africa like this, we will see much more crime from Africa mm. towards other regions, and they will also themselves be a victim of crime. Mm. And again, because That's we know big. this, we have to prepare mm. the African states for that fact when they go online, and that is why we have capacity building programs yeah. together mm. with Interpol in, in, in that area. Maybe I can answer uh, to you in terms of second question. Uh, whether Singapore is the uh, origin of the cyber attack or the other way around with the destination of the cyber attack, uh, cyber crime. Uh, we, can, we can think in two different ways. One is that, um, that Singapore has very really well uh, advanced IT infrastructure. Without appropriate information security measures, that well-advanced structure may be abused by the criminals. And then, in that case, the Singapore may become the origin of the cyber attack. But once again, without appropriate information security measures taken by the government or taken by the companies who possess those the facilities. In terms of the, the destination of the cyber crime. Once again, I just would like to remind you of the motivation of the criminals, how, uh, what they want to do, and how they want to do what. Essentially, they would like to make money. So naturally, they target the country where the wealth exists. Um, just like um, the host mentioned, now Africa is being um, targeted by cyber criminals because the rich people started to use the internet, meaning they are vulnerable to the cyber attack. And then without appropriate the information security measures, and other actually key infrastructures like um, banks, especially small and middle scale banks, they are targeted. In Singapore, I think they're well matured so I think that in terms of the victimization, I don't think that the, uh, this is the outstanding issues of let's say, Singapore. But naturally, as long as your country is wealthy and then also the, in the good shape, the criminals continue to look at you, look at the Singapore, because they see the opportunity to make money, to make profit. So that's my answer. Thank you.
Maybe I could add here that uh, if, if you want, I have this graph showing the world and the attacks live right now. So you can see where, who's attacking who, mm. and on what time. And I can give you the link and you can follow it because it's very instructive. The problem is you cannot always trust this because the criminals are very good in making it look like that attack comes from Germany, but actually it comes from another country, mm. but they use proxies. Mm. But it's a picture anyway, and we can share this page with me. Nose. Yeah. This is Paul from uh, Agence France Press. I just wanted to ask, get your insights on uh, uh, how extremist groups like Islamic State or any other extremist groups are using the internet for their purposes and what's being done to stop them. In Europe, we see uh, again, this is a question that is not covered by the mandate that the European Cybercrime Center has. This is again intelligence, but we, I will still answer it because I think this, this is important. We, we look at, at cyber terrorism, uh, of course, so uh, it, it's, it's part of our mandate to look at cyber terrorism. I'm not sure that it's part of, of Interpol's mandate, but I don't know. Mm. What we have seen is that, that terrorists, they don't use the internet still for conducting operations. They still like bumps more than they like bits, so they stick to the old-fashioned way, but they still use the internet very, very heavily. They use it for recruitment, radicalization, and for facilitation, and for stealing money to do their cases. So you see they are more and more active. They have been active for many, many years in trying to radicalize young people, to recruit them in, in secret forums where they upload uh, videos and, 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 and try to attract them to go to, to, to war and to be foreign fighters. And they communicate, they use the internet for communication, which you can because it's very covert communication sometimes. And they also use it for producing money that they use for their course. So because of this, we are, of course, very, very active in, in this. So we have a, in Europol, a, a CT uh, a unit, a counterterrorism unit, which looks at what is called Check the Web. So we, we are online and we assist our member states in this and right now we are actually quite concerned about the foreign fighters going to Syria and back again and because when they come back they, 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 they might have changed and, and they have to integrate in this society but they could be potential terrorists. So, so of course this is of, of, of big concern. Still, the internet is not used to, let's say, conduct an attack but it's used to facilitate but it might change. A terrorist use of the internet is the actually long-standing um, issues, N not new issues actually, but the way they use internet has been evolving. For instance, terrorist financing, they may use the same methodology as money laundering. Money laundering is crime. Once again, we are focusing on the criminal justice. It's not the just that, you know, spying or intelligence, no. So if the way they use internet is somehow categorized as crime in the specific countries or in some more other countries, then we will step in by providing actionable intelligence to member country. But before that, and then as long as we see the threat in a way that they use the internet in the criminal way, I mean criminal type of usage, then we will interpol IGCI. Um, is going to take some research activities on that. So I think that that is uh, what we, pr we are planning to do. Uh, and then that is a way we support our member countries' investigation on the ter terrorism. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.